Hi, I'm Sarah with the Hobby Lobby Creative Studio. Welcome to our Sew This Bedroom series. In today's tutorial, I'll show you how easy it is to customize your window treatment with a quick and simple one-of-a-kind faux Roman shade. What makes this shade faux is that the draped layers are actually created by strategically placed tension rods. This makes it easier to make, but still gives that classy look of a traditional Roman shade. First, we need to start by taking some measurements. Now, if you're making two or more matching shades, you'll definitely want to write down all your measurements as you go. As it so happens, the printable for this video has a handy fill-in-the-blank list for keeping track of all your measurements. Just click on the link, print it out, and you're ready to measure. Let's start with the width of the window. Measuring the distance inside the frame, mine is 29 inches wide. Your finished curtain width should be a half an inch smaller than the window, just so it fits and hangs nicely within the frame. So since my window is 29 inches wide, my finished curtain should be 28 and a half inches wide. I'll be doing a single one inch hem on both the right and left sides. So I'll add two inches to my fabric measurement, giving me 30 and a half inches total. So 30 and a half inches is how wide my starting piece of fabric needs to be. I know it sounds like a lot to get this measurement, but just remember it like this. Take the width of your window and simply add an inch and a half. The rest of that explanation is just so you know how I got there in case your numbers aren't the same as mine. That's easy enough, right? So now let's find out our length. At this point, we need to decide how much of our window we want our shade to cover. Some of you may prefer a shade that covers the entire window or a shade that only covers half of the window. Keep in mind that you can adjust the coverage some just by moving the tension rods closer together or farther apart. I'm going to make our shade so that it covers about two-thirds of our window. You will start by measuring how far down you want your shade to be on your window. I want mine to be about 30 inches, so that's my base number. Now, for every draped layer you would like to have in your shade, you need to add 6 inches. Mine will have two layers, so I'll add 12 inches, giving me a total of 42 inches right now. Next, I need to account for my hem and rod pocket. I'll add one inch for the bottom hem and two inches for my rod pocket. So that means I need to add three inches to the 42 inches I was at before, giving me a total length of 45 inches of fabric needed to start. You'll start by cutting your fabric and your lining material to the final measurements you just got. Mine will be 30 and a half inches by 45 inches. Here's a quick tip. If needed, cut your fabric so the design is centered on the shade. This may require you to cut a little off both sides, but it's worth it in the end. Also, if you aren't familiar with using a rotary blade to easily cut your fabric to size, check out our Learn to Sew video on measuring and cutting fabric. Adding a lining to your shade serves several purposes. It not only helps block out light and protects against the heat and the cold, but it also adds visual weight and body to your shade. You can use anything from a lightweight muslin, like I have here, to a heavier drapery fabric, or even some light blocking material, like this one, just depending on your need. Once you've got your fabric and lining cut to size, turn your fabric print side down and place your lining on top of it. Pin the lining to the fabric, making sure the fabric is staying nice and smooth as you pin. Once all your pins are in place, to secure the two pieces together and to prevent fraying, sew a tight zigzag stitch close to the edge all the way around the fabric. Next, we're going to hem our sides. If your fabric design has straight lines in it, like mine does, make sure that your fold is perfectly straight following those straight lines in the design. So, starting with one of our long edges, fold your fabric over one inch, pressing and pinning as you go. Use a seam gauge to make sure you're keeping a one inch fold all the way down the edge. Sew a straight stitch all the way down the edge of the fabric, just to the right of the zigzag stitches. To make sure your stitches are nice and secure, remember to start and end with a back stitch every time you sew throughout this project. I repeated the last few steps on my opposite long side, so now that I have both long sides sewn, I'm ready to sew my rod pocket and the bottom hem. 
The rod pocket is the hem that is large enough for our curtain rod to slide through. I will have three total in my shade. We will start by hemming our top rod pocket. With your fabric print side down, fold your fabric up two inches. Press and pin in place. Again, sew a straight stitch all the way across, beginning and ending with a quick back stitch. So now that the rod pocket is done, there are just a few more steps till we're finished. I used the same steps as before, pressing, pinning, and sewing to make a one inch hem along the bottom edge. Now I'm ready to add my draped layers. This is where all those childhood math classes or a calculator may come in handy. With your fabric print side down, we first need to take a full measurement of the length of our fabric, rounded to the nearest full inch. Ours is a tad over 41 inches, so for this we're just going to round up to 42 inches. We don't have to be overly particular for this part, as long as you make the same measurements on a matching Roman shade, you'll be just fine. Now because I want two draped layers in my finished shade, I need three fabric sections to give me the placement for the two rod pockets needed to create my draped layers. So, I'll take my 42 inches from before and divide that by three. This gives me 14 inches. So, toward the side of the fabric, I'll measure 14 inches down from the top and make a small mark with my disappearing ink pen. The great thing about the pen I'm using is that it's actually dual ended. On one end, you have ink that will wash out the first time the fabric is laundered, and on the other end, you have ink that will gradually disappear over time without having to wash it out. So I'm using the disappearing ink end for this project. Now from that mark, I'll measure another 14 inches down and make another mark. Now I'm going to make those same 14 inch marks at the other edge of my fabric as well. Now you're just going to connect the marks. Lie your ruler between the two marks, drawing a full line across the fabric for both of the 14 inch measurements. Flip your fabric over and fold it along one of the lines, pressing with your iron as you go to get a nice crisp edge. Do the same thing at the second line. Now we're ready to mark where our stitch line for the rod pockets will be. With your fabric folded at one of your 14 inch lines, Use your seam gauge to measure one and a half inches and make another set of small tick marks. Lay your ruler across the marks and make a nice straight line to follow as you sew. Pin this fold in place. Repeat for your other 14 inch fold line, mark your one and a half inch seam line, draw a straight line and pin it into place. Sew along both of these lines, removing the pins as you go. And now you've got two pockets for the tension rods that create that great faux Roman shade look. I'm going to add this chic tassel trim to the bottom that will really make my Roman shade look top of the line. I'm going to attach it using fabric glue because it's very bulky and it would be difficult to feed it through my standard size sewing machine. But of course, if you're using a thinner trim, you can just run a straight stitch down the center to attach it. So, cut your trim so that it hangs over both edges of the fabric by one inch. Starting about one inch from the edge, add a line of fabric adhesive all the way down the center of the trim, stopping about one inch from the other edge. Place the trim along the bottom edge of the shade. Continue working your way to the end. Add binder clips along the edge between the tassels to hold it securely in place while the glue dries. Turn your shade over and add glue to the ends of your trim. Wrap them around the shade and place a binder clip on the end. Once it's dry, just remove the clips and you're ready to hang it up. Start with the top tension rod and work your way down. Measure out the spacing to keep the draped layers even and that's it. A Roman shade is a great way to add a truly professional look to any room. Be sure to check out our other videos in our Sew This Bedroom series for more one-of-a-kind projects to make your dream room come to life. Well, I'll see you next time at the Hobby Lobby Creative Studio.